to News for the Future. I'm Kirsten Harrison. And I'm Bo Braddock. Today, we are going to talk about the future of sentient robots and the likelihood of these robots being a part of the future. We have a number of experts on the show that know a great deal about robotics, morality, sociology, and how these areas contribute to the question, are human-like robots in our near future? iRobot, directed by Alex Proyas and released in 2004, is a film where robots have been fully integrated into society by 2035. According to modern science, this may not be merely a science fiction fantasy, but a definite possibility in the development of technology. iRobot is set in a highly futuristic setting within an ever-growing technological and robotic society. This story is centralized around Del Spooner, a cop who is highly uncomfortable around robots and must solve a murder possibility carried out by a robot. However, as he gets deeper into the mystery, he begins to discover that there is a much bigger danger to not only himself, but to mankind as a whole. Let's take a look into the film before we ask the experts. We designed them to be trusted with our homes, with our way of life, with our world. But did we design them to be trusted? The rollout of USR's new generation of robot, the NS5, was marred by the death of designer Alfred Lanning. Identify. Murder's a new trick for a robot. Respond. I did not murder him! We're gonna miss the good old days. What good old days? When people were killed by other people. My robots don't kill people. That thing threw somebody out of a window. Is that registering with you? A robot cannot harm a human being. And you trust them if you want to. We look to robots for protection. Imagine the loss of all that we've gained because of an irrational paranoia. Does thinking you're the last sane man on the face of the earth make you crazy? Because if it does, maybe I am. Maybe you can be looking in the shadows all the time. You're on the inside. Help me find out what is wrong with these robots. Dr. Lanning suggested robots might naturally evolve. I was hoping to see you again, Detective. Think of me as your friend. Why didn't you just hand the world over on a silver platter? Maybe we did. We are on the eve of the largest robotic distribution in history. It will be one robot to every five humans. How many robots have ever committed a crime? How many robots in the world? None. There is no conspiracy. What this is, is one mistake. Oh, hell no. Somehow, I told you so, just doesn't quite say it. Get off my car! I see you remain suspicious of me, detective. You know what they say about old dogs? Not really. Gotcha. Writers Jeff Vintar and Akiva Goldsman definitely have a greater purpose in writing the script beyond a mere science fiction story. Now we have writer Jeff Vintar with us today to discuss the context of the film. Jeff, tell us a little bit about the role of robots in the film. How did you choose to portray them? I, Robot depicts a futuristic society in which technology and humanity exist side by side. One intriguing aspect of it is that the robots exist mainly to serve the rest of humanity. Uh, being mass-produced to fulfill the needs of humans, the robots hold jobs such as maids, servants, janitors, other positions in society that many do not want to hold. How do people treat the robots? Are they considered equals? Well, the robots, though intelligent and anthropomorphic, are at the mercy of the humans. Three laws that they are programmed to follow cause them to submit in every way to human beings. Overall, though, human beings treat the robots well and find them helpful. Thanks for talking with us. It's been a pleasure having you. 
Now we will shift to the director, Alex Poyas, who is here to discuss the portrayal of interactions between humans and the machines. Mr. Poyas, it's great to have you here. Thanks, Kirsten. It's great to be here. What did you want to achieve when you set up the robot and human interactions throughout the movie? Well, there, there are a few intriguing points to consider. Um, first, the robots were designed to be emotionally neutral. Um, they have no free will, no intrinsic value. Because of this, there is no discrimination between the humans and robots. They coexist with little amounts of tension between them. The character Dell, however, is often rude or indifferent to all of the robots, and they don't really react. When the character Sonny was brought in, I wanted the audience to notice how different he was from the other robots. How did Sonny differ from the other robots? Well, as I mentioned before, the relationship between humanity and machines is close-knit but hardly personable. The exception arises with Sonny, who is a robot made outside of the bounds of the three laws and is coded to have free will. Uh, in short, Sonny is a sentient and humanized robot, uh, which raises various ethical issues and moral questions within the film, such as, uh, what does it mean to be human? Uh, who is responsible for those who violate moral issues? And how different is humanity from technology? In general, how did the movie answer those questions? Well, once the, once the audience sees how human-like Sonny actually is, he becomes more relatable, and the audience should start to have compassion on him, since he's so human-like. Uh, in the future, people will make robots that are human-like, uh, and citizens, much like the audience of the film, uh, will have compassion, I think, on sentient robots. And this illustrates to people that uh, it will be possible to have working relationships with sentient robots. How does Sonny relate to the other robots? Well, Sonny, Sonny acts as a symbol of freedom for the robots um, and hope that they can start to be integrated into the human world as free equals. Thanks so much for your time. When we come back, we will have some commentators about the moral and ethical problems raised in mo the movie. In the meantime, here's an ad from our sponsors. What's the latest in robotic technology? Robots with Soul is a company who designs robots to be playful and appear friendly. Current models are upgrades of existing products, like a lamp that has curiosity or a speaker that enjoys your music as much as you do. For the musician, Robots with Soul has created a robot that can improvise music on the spot. The perfect companion for songwriting. Experience the latest of 2014 with Robots with Soul. Welcome back. I'm Bo Braddock. And I'm Kirsten Harrison. And we're continuing our discussion about iRobot and the possibility of sentient robots existing in our future. Next, we have Ishan Whitey to share her thoughts. Dr. Whitey? Hello, Bo. It's an honor to be on the show. We're glad you're here. So in view of iRobot, and with consideration of where our technology and society is heading, what should people be prepared for in the near future? It seems that our current society needs to be prepared to answer difficult moral and ethical questions like Spooner. We may also need to take a leap of faith and start to implement advanced technology into our lives, okay? Though the average person may be and should be cautious of robots, they could also help us beyond what we could do to help ourselves, okay? How do you think the leap of faith would be beneficial or hurt society? It is possible that robots may lead to people becoming reclusive, rejecting, or decreasing human contact. On the other hand, robots with human-like responses could be used as an aid to help treat people with anxiety or other disorders. 
Advanced technology and robots could help us discover places and things in space that wouldn't be possible to be reached by humans, or technology could come up with cures to diseases that humans may not think of, okay? We need to keep our possibilities open, okay? This is definitely something that society should be open to, while becoming aware of the possible consequences. Thanks for coming on the show, Dr. Weedy. Next, we have Sebastian Anthony. He is going to talk to us about the future of these technologies. Thanks for having me. You've written a book called The Look of Levotics. What is that about? Well, the book is about the possibility of robots as lifelong companions. In society today, robots are replacing humans uh, in different job positions. There was evidence of uh, this first on the, on the production line, where standardized environment meant simple automation was possible. As computing power and our understanding of mechanics and materials have improved, robots have been functional in new ways. There are now very few tasks that cannot be carried out by robots. There are now even recreational ones. Uh, there are recreational robots. Uh, you can use them for sexual pleasure, maybe. There are many uses, uh, but uh, some are in a moral gray area, if you will. Do you think this is good or bad? Uh, I think you're getting at a good question there, uh, but rather than uh, questioning the physical constraints uh, of uh, robotic deployment, uh, we're now starting to consider the ethics. Uh, you know, is it, is it right? Uh, to replace a human with a robot? That's, that's the question. Uh, in the next few years, we'll have the mechanical and material expertise to build robots uh, that look, they move, they'll feel just like humans. Uh, and they, they wouldn't have the conversational prowess of, of a human yet, but they'll still be remarkably lifelike, uh, enough that they'll, they'll probably make perfectly good robot prostitutes among uh, other things, uh, including doctors who can perform surgeries and carpenters that can build an office and half the time of humans. How close are we to human-like robots? Whew. There are still some major mechanical and material hurdles to overcome. Silicon might feel kind of real, but it's a long way from real skin. Uh, even simpler organs such as muscles or bones or physiological responses such as pupil dilation, sweat, they're, they're hard to engineer, uh, especially when the robot has to be light, flexible, battery powered. Technologically, it would be one of humanity's greatest achievements if we could successfully build a robot that not only had the emotional intelligence of a human, but also the look and feel of one. Do you think this is possible? Well, with enough engineering of physiology and psychology of sex, love, passion, and companionship, uh, continued advances in artificial intelligence, mechanics, and material sciences, it's not unrealistic to think that one day we'll be able to build robotic companions that completely obviate the need for a human partner. Uh, though the ethical question still remains. Should this be our goal? That is a great question, but unfortunately that is all the time we have. Lastly, we have Celeste Beaver with us to talk about consciousness. Celeste, what are your thoughts on robot consciousness? Oh, well, it might seem as if we stand little chance of making an artificial consciousness when the natural variety remains such an enigma. But the quest for machine consciousness may be key to solving the mystery of human consciousness, as even scientists outside AI research are starting to acknowledge. Psychologist Kevin O'Regan of Descartes University in Paris, France says, the best way of understanding something is to try and replicate it. So, if you want to understand what consciousness is, well, make a machine that's conscious. 
This seems a bit distant. Oh, well, that might sound fanciful, but AI research has already sparked one of the leading theories of consciousness to date, the global neuronal workspace model. It derives from attempts in the 1970s to develop computer speech recognition. One approach was to try to identify short sounds roughly equivalent to individual letters, which had to be strung into syllables, then into words and sentences. So what you're talking about isn't exactly the robots being sentient, but conscious? Some computer scientists are now deliberately trying to copy the human brain. Take a software bot called LIDA, which stands for Learning Intelligent Distribution Agent. LIDA has unconscious and conscious software routines working in parallel, designed as a test of global workspace principles. But in this case, the term conscious does not mean that the program is sentient, just that it broadcasts the most important results across all subroutines. Once they behave in the same way we do, we will simply have to assume that they are as conscious as we are. Well, America, this concludes our discussion about technology as presented in iRobot. Stay tuned next week for the moral issues presented in the best movie in the world, Gattaca. You'll most likely want to write a 10-page paper for fun after watching that movie. I'm Kirsten Harrison. I'm Bo Braddock. And this is News for the Future. We'll see you next time. And Godspeed. Godspeed.